Joe Cole with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and this is one of my favorite episodes to do for you guys. Actually, it's a produce haul video where I'm just basically sharing with you guys what I got at the Los Angeles Wholesale Produce Terminal, as well as a few other places, you know, to basically stock up on produce, uh, probably for the next couple weeks or maybe about the next month, actually. And uh, why I do these videos is to let you guys know how cheap produce can be, but also give you guys a lot of little helpful tidbits along the way to teach you guys about produce, about eating a plant-based raw foods diet, and of course about saving money, which is one of my favorite things to do. In any case, uh, let's go ahead and open up the Jeep and share with you guys the produce haul this month. So one of the topics that you guys may know is very important to me is actually about organic. I mean, I teach organic gardening online. If you haven't seen my videos on how to do that, you can check me out at growingyourgreens.com. Super passionate about organics, and I want to talk about that you know, conventional versus organic, you know, there will be people online making videos that organic's a waste of money, there will be people online saying you always got to buy organic or it's not even worth being raw, you know, and eating fruits and vegetables. So, you know, in this video I'm going to share my opinions about it, basically, to sum it up in a few words, you know, any way you can eat more fresh fruits and vegetables the better. I know many of you guys out there might not even be afford organic, you know, food, produce. I know many of you guys out there might not even have organic produce available at your supermarkets, you know, and, and places you guys shop for. And so then I would say definitely, yes, conventional food is definitely better than buying animal products and other processed food products, even if organic, in my opinion, in most cases. Although, you know, it's a lot more complicated than that. You know, we could get into talking about the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. There are, you know, conventional produce items that are sprayed more or sprayed less and the environmental working group ewg.org produces a list pretty much every year that goes over the top sprayed and top cleanest produce items so you might want to avoid the conventional items that are the most sprayed and you know go for some of the ones that are the least sprayed of course in my opinion it's always better to eat fruits and vegetables than ho-hos ding-dongs and twinkies and cokes and hamburgers and all this kind of stuff you know so use your common sense that being said, I do support organic whenever I can, you know, in buying produce. But as you guys will see, is that I don't buy all organic stuff. And there's a few reasons for that. And uh, let's go ahead and get into that as I pull out the produce uh, that I bought this month. So, first thing I got right here, <laughs> as it comes out, check it out, man. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> these guys are huge. All right, I don't know if you guys can see that right there. But uh, what we got here is we got two big bunches of a uh, sugar cane so yes I'm a grass muncher <laughs> so sugar cane is actually a grass and that happens to be the sweetest grass and while I'm not a big fan of uh, consuming processed sugars and whatnot you know I don't recommend you guys eat refined sugars I'd much rather you know have a sugar cane so instead of eating refined organic white sugar right I'd rather eat conventional <laughs> non-gmo <laughs> Uh, sugar cane because this is once again a whole food and yeah you know it might be sprayed but I wash it down clean it off and then of course I'm juicing it up to basically extract all the the nutrition out of all the fiber now the grass family can absorb up to 90 different minerals is what I've heard so this stuff's super nutritious and this is not gonna taste as sweet as like putting some refined sugar in water. That's not the same as sugar cane juice because in the sugar cane juice, you get more than just the sweetness. You get a tad sweetness actually, but really these guys are not that sweet. They're really just uh, nature's source of filtered water, plus a lot of different vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals as well. So uh, these guys were about um, $10 for one bunch, which is a thinner bunch. And I, got, I spent $15 on a bunch that's nice and fat, so I'm hoping hopefully the fatter one's a bit more mature and going to be a little more sweet. So the next thing I bought were these guys. This is my first purchase actually at the wholesale terminal uh, this uh, month actually. And what we've got here is a box of ripe papayas. So these were known as seconds. This box is 35 pounds, was a total of $12. So these are definitely going to get eaten rather quickly because they definitely do not store or keep that well and once again 
these are non-organic. It can be very difficult to get organic papayas, and if you do, they are very expensive. Uh, wholesale, they generally run about $3 a pound. So, you know, these were significantly less. And the Mardul papayas, which is this uh, variety here. Let me go ahead and pull one out to show you guys. Mardul variety. These are like the nice long papayas. These ones are actually from Mexico. And uh, basically, on, based on my research, the Mardul papaya is not a genetically modified version at this time. Uh, the GMO versions are the smaller ones, so always be wary of buying the small papayas, especially ones, unfortunately, from Hawaii, unless marked non-GMO or organic. So yep, good deal on papayas this week. So one of the reasons why I buy non-organic produce is because of two reasons. Uh, it can be very cost prohibitive to buy organic uh, produce, such as in the case of the papayas. You know, it could cost significantly more money. And the other reason is because some items are just simply not available organic. And so you have to make the determination like, okay, will I rather not eat this produce item or would I rather eat it non-organic? So the next item that I bought, actually I brought the uh, Coco Selecto Tierno, which are basically the young coconuts. Uh, these guys are from Mexico. As you guys can see uh, in a box, there's a lot of little cocos in there. And uh, there's 28 of these guys in here. Each box was $17 this time. And uh, coconuts to me are like uh, best filtered water on earth. You know, why have a glass of bottled water or a plastic bottle of water? And why not just have coconuts in the husk? I mean, this is nature's bottled water right off the tree. It's already been husked and it's ready for me to basically pop a hole in there and drink it on up. Really rich in electrolytes, also rich in plant cytokines, which I believe are anti-aging for the plant, but also anti-aging for us. Also has some delicious uh, jelly baby meat in there, which is delicious to eat. And if I didn't eat conventional produce sometimes, then I wouldn't be able to get these uh, young coconuts because I've only ever seen mature brown coconuts available organically and even finding those is actually quite rare and to me uh, You know the coconut water is very beneficial now would I rather get organic coconut water in a plastic bottle That's HPP or it says raw on it or conventional uh, Coconuts, you know in the husk not tampered with not put through any processing Well, guess what? I'm gonna get these conventional ones. I mean the other thing is, you know, coconuts have a very hard shell. There's a husk that surrounds this, so anything that's sprayed on it, it's probably not getting in there. And so I feel, you know, comfortable buying these guys. Now, the ones, if you are getting the young coconuts from Thailand, a little bit different story. They are dipped in fungicide and sulfites, which, you know, I don't necessarily recommend. I do buy those on occasion, but I prefer the ones from Mexico. Uh, these are the Mexican ones out of the husk. They also have Mexican ones in the husk that actually I prefer more than than these ones, but they were not available uh, this time. So I got a total of two cases of coconuts, 28 pieces times two, and uh, that's definitely gonna keep me hydrated for the good next few weeks. So the next produce item I got this trip to the wholesale produce terminal was these guys. Let me go ahead and slide these over. Ugh. These are some of my favorite fruits in the world. I know many of you guys may not have tried these guys before. These are simply known as the cactus fruits. And these are the red cactus fruits here. Uh, this case is 40 pounds, and this case was $16. And then I have a case of the green cactus fruits, which were 40 pounds for $18. Uh, you know, and once again, these are not organic either. They're conventionally grown. But I feel all right with that because number one, I've never seen organically certified cactus fruits. So that means that I would not be able to enjoy this fruit if I didn't get them conventional. Furthermore, I believe these are, you know, not sprayed too much. I mean, these grow wild around the city and I've wild harvested my own cactus fruits. Bugs don't really seem to bother them too much. And so, you know, and then plus I also peel the skin before I juice the uh, centers and it is one delicious drink. Now the difference between the red and the greens are simply, the reds have a lot more maybe flavor to them and also phytochemicals and phytonutrients and antioxidants. There's a lot of research actually on the cactus fruit and how beneficial it is in promoting you know, healthy blood sugar and, and all this kind of stuff. And then the green ones, you know, I like for the sweetness. So in general, I like to juice at least, you know, uh, two greens, one red, 
makes a delicious juice, reminds me of drinking high C punch when I was a kid. Sure doesn't really taste like that, but it's so fruity and so delicious. Really great. Minimally do uh, one to one for a nice delicious treat. And uh, one of the things I like about the cactus fruits is that they store for a fairly long time. I mean, these guys grow in the desert. They're used to hot weather. You know, even when picked, if they're nice and firm like this one will, this could stay outside the fridge in a cool place, you know, not in the hot summer sun and because we are going into fall slash winter, the nights are getting into the, you know, 40s and the days are in the 60s, maybe low 70s if we're lucky. Uh, these guys will easily last a month out of the fridge. If you put them in the fridge, they'll probably last two months. So yeah, super uber cool. And, uh, you know, I want to stop here for a second, you know, on the cactus fruits and talk about, you know, uh, those are probably most of the conventional items I got this time and these items pretty much I couldn't find organic or be cost prohibitive to buy them uh, organic and so that's one of the reasons why I buy the conventional food but I'm not giving you guys like a blanket oh yeah it's alright to buy conventional food you know it, it depends on your situation I always encourage you guys to buy organic whenever possible and I want to remind you guys right I mean I'm, while I do support organic agriculture whenever possible, I do want to let you guys know that you are voting with your dollars, right? When you buy organic produce and when you buy conventional produce, you're sending a message to the person that's growing it, to the industry, you know, and that's what you want. If people only bought conventional produce and never bought organic again, then there would be no more organic growers, which I think would be a really bad thing. Although I don't agree with all the organic growing practices that are written into the laws. You know, I think it is a much better way of farming and growing food that pollutes the earth less, pollutes your body less, and based on the studies I've seen, produces a higher quality food. And that's what I think it should be like. I mean, I mean, if, if I was making this video, which I couldn't have like 100 years ago, I wouldn't even be making it because everything was grown organic. It was only after the World War when there's all these chemicals and all this kind of stuff that conventional produce was even invented. So for all of world history, right, there was no such thing as conventional produce. It was all organic and it was organic by default because that's all people did, all people knew. So I want you guys to consider that point, you know, next time you go to the store and are considering buying conventional or organic and which one is more of the, the true produce that we would have been eating way back in the days before chemicals and chemical fertilizers and all these kind of things. All right, so besides just going to the wholesale produce terminal, I don't rely only on the wholesale produce terminal for the produce I'm eating because if you do, frankly, you know, you might be getting the cheapest stuff, but you're not going to be getting the best stuff and you might be lacking on some of the diversity. In addition, sometimes, in some cases, the wholesale produce terminal is actually more expensive than going to the farmer's market. So I always want to encourage you guys to visit your local farmer's market, especially if you guys live in L.A. You'd be crazy not to visit some of the cool farmer's markets down there, particularly like the Hollywood farmer's market and the Torrance farmer's market. I find those guys usually have some really good varieties and some super low prices, you know. And yeah, I mean, you could go to the Santa Monica farmer's market, but you know, that one, like, you got some good variety, but man, they just jack up the prices more because they know the chef's shop there. Any case, uh, let me share with you guys what I got at the farmer's market this time. So one of the killer deals that I got at the farmer's market is uh, these guys here. We got persimmons, and this is just one small little uh, flat of them, but I got a lot of persimmons. I got probably like a huge box of persimmons plus an extra 10 extra pounds. So probably about a total of like 40 pounds of persimmons that ran approximately $25. And some of these guys were particularly ripe and they're super delicious and these guys are certified organic. I mean another thing why I like the farmers market is because you get to select the produce you're going to buy and ask the farmers, hey do you guys have any overripe ones that you want to sell for cheap? And that's how I scored a really good deal, you know, literally a box of persimmons for 15 bucks. And uh, that was an amazing, but a lot of them, you know, we're super ripe, super ready to eat, but it all worked out because I actually went to a Fruit Luck that day and brought the Fruit Luck, uh, you know, brought them the ripest ones and then I got to eat the second ripest ones which were still, let me tell you, plenty ripe and super delicious. And that qu the quality that I got of the persimmons far exceeds the ones that you'd ever get at the wholesale produce terminal. So yeah, persimmons for the win. 
definitely one of my favorite uh, fall slash winter foods to eat. So the next fruit I got right here, check it out. We got these white sapotes and yes, these are uh, really ripe white sapotes because they are mostly yellow. So I pitied the fool that went to the farmer's market after me because I picked through and got all the yellow ones because these are the ripest ones. I think it's sad that some farmers at the farmer's market will sell their uh, white sapotes when they're still green and actually fairly dark green. You want them at least light green when you're buying them. And uh, these guys are going to be stored in the fridge because they are getting soft and are basically could be eaten now, but I'd like to get them a little bit riper. Uh, these guys were only $1.50 a pound, probably about 10 pounds of these guys, and they were super, uber delicious. And so, yeah. So, I mean, the thing I want to talk about is, you know, always you guys always want to support local farmers, and even better than support, supporting local farmers that are growing organically and organic foods, is to basically be your own farmer, grow your own food, get your own acreage, have your own fruit trees, grow them organically, because as much as I like that they have organic standards to, you know, have something different as an option than conventional, by no means do I agree with all the different standards that and practices that are in organic growing. I mean, basically organic growing or organic farming, they say you can do this and you can't do this. You could use these approved, uh, you know, natural pest controls, but you can't use these. You could use these fertilizers, but not these fertilizers. That's great, but the thing that is not being talked about is what must be done in order to grow the highest quality food. Because even organic food is not necessarily the highest quality food, in my opinion, based on my study of the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years of how to grow the highest quality food. And that's why I teach you guys on my gardening channel, Growing Your Greens, how to grow the highest quality food you want. Because simply, you know, industrial conventional farmers and even small agricultural farmers at your farmer's market are not growing the highest quality food because when it all comes down to it, it's all about money for them, right? They need to make a living and sometimes if they do, they have a belief that if they do certain practices, it's gonna cost them too much and they're not gonna get a return on their investment. Plus, they've been doing this for 50 years and they don't wanna change what they're doing because what they're doing is works and they don't wanna improve on how they're doing things. I wanna always wanna encourage you guys to improve on the methods of how you're doing things, whether that's in relationships in your life, whether that's with your diet, whether that's with your job, or whether that's with, uh, you know, the food that you're consuming and growing it. So the next produce item I got this trip were right here. Let me see if I can get, grab these out. These guys are some heavy bags. One, <laughs> two big bags of organic Valencia oranges from uh, Stell Heath Organic Farms. Uh, this is uh, basically 50 pounds total, 50 pounds ran $24. So that's uh, you know definitely a good price, under 50 cents a pound for organic and organic ripe Valencia oranges because they are soft and they're ready to be eaten now. They're not all hard and firm, so they have a lower acid content. You know, That's another reason to buy at the farmer's market because you're going to get riper produce than you could in many cases at the wholesale produce terminal. I mean, another thing I want to talk about while we're talking about organic and conventional growing, I mean, we talked about organic in the last segment, but another thing that's not often talked about that most people don't have a clue about is actually growing high quality food and growing non high quality food and the main differences. So standard agriculture and even most organic agriculture is concerned with three primary minerals, NPK. That's on what's written on the fertilizer bags, you know, whether you're buying miracle crap fertilizer at Home Depot or some kind of agricultural fertilizer if you're a conventional gardener. They're looking for those three numbers because they know without those three nutrients, those three minerals, the plants will not grow properly and yield, you know, food. That being said, you know, those are the three minerals that are absolutely necessary for life, like absolutely necessary for life for us, like what? Food, <laughs> water, and air, right? We need these three things, but you know, we want to have the cleanest air, we want to have the cleanest water, and of course we want to have the best food, which in my opinion is simply fruits and vegetables. But you know, the fact of the matter is clear, many Americans eat junk food, they eat McDonald's three times a day, they eat all kinds of crap. They're still alive and kicking, right? But they're not as healthy as they could be. Well, that's how I kind of look at conventional fertilizers, uh, you know, versus, you know, nutrient-dense fertilizers, because, you know, um, 
like you could have a lot higher quality fertilizer and just because you're growing organically doesn't mean you're automatically using high quality fertilizer because most organic growers are also just concerned with those three minerals they got organic approved fertilizers you know made mostly out of manure products like chicken manures that are, that have the NP the K primarily and they're not concerned with the other 70 to 90 trace minerals that you, that they could be putting into the ground now I want to give it to some farmers out there they will you know besides just paying attention to three main minerals they may pay attention to up to 15 or 16 minerals but that's nowhere close to the 70 to 90 that I you know add to my garden in a regular basis and I have friends that grow you know with this d this different complexity of different minerals you know it's like eating a 30 banana a day diet and eating only bananas for your whole life you know because that's what you're supposed to do to get to carb up or you could be eating a wide diversity of you know just some of the things that I'm eating this time this for this next month you know I like to eat a diversity because every different produce item has a whole spectrum of different vitamins minerals and more importantly to me is the phytochemicals and I hope that is also important to you guys it's not often talked about but these are the different things like the lycopenes and the tomatoes that actually we're gonna pull out next and you know the bromelain and all this kind of stuff that's in the foods that basically give us protective qualities that can protect us from different things and help our bodies heal and if you're not getting these phytochemicals in you in my opinion you're not gonna be as healthy as you can and so that's what I try to do in the, in my gardening approach is add 70 to 90 minerals whereas most conventional and organic growers are concerned with three primary up to 15 and the other thing that I didn't mention about this is that you know think about it you know the average American that's eating hamburgers to use that analogy again or McDonald's every day compared to like a, a person eating a high fruit and vegetable diet the health is gonna be dramatically different now they're gonna look the same almost well maybe the person eating hamburgers gonna be a lot more puffed up and actually produce grown on NPK only sometimes can get actually quite large but the composition of the produce is significantly different and this is not talked about I mean I've barely seen any YouTube videos any other raw fooders talking about the composition of the produce so for example you know conventionally grown produce from the store for example take green beans you know could have 50 percent less protein if grown with an NPK fertilizer grown in standard agricultural practices and if you grew it in your yard or had a farmer that actually grew high nutrient dense crops it could have double the amount of protein in there this is not to mention double the amount of other certain nutrients in there so now the produce just gone from you know being twice as nutritious for the same given quantity so now maybe you could eat 15 bananas a day if you had nutrient dense bananas could have more protein and you know more nutrients in there the last topic I want to talk about while I'm talking about this subject of growing nutrient dense versus you know standard conventional even organic uh, produce that's not being focused on the wide spectrum of minerals is that you know there's an input going into the soil whether that's three minerals whether that's 15 or 16 or whether that's 70 to 90 right that's a that's a huge difference and what you put in is what you get out right so if you're putting three minerals in you know those minerals are gonna be concentrated in the food so certain foods in this day and age grown with NPK have higher you know ratios of those specific minerals in them you know than food that I grow in my backyard and so why does that matter so basically as you guys know we're supposed to get our nutrients from our food if, and if we're if the nutrients aren't simply not in the food because they're not replacing them in the soil then we're not going to get them into us plus because you know in especially in industrial agriculture especially industrial conventional agriculture they're pumping so much fertilizer in right the plant is going to uptake whatever is in the ground in that percentage ratio to some extent so you're, it's a very imbalanced piece of produce although you know people think an orange is an orange is an orange an orange and orange is not an orange when it doesn't have the right ratios of nutrients that should be in nature I mean this is easily identified you could go into the USDA they've done studies that show the produce from the 1950s is more nutritious than the produce grown of today you know sometimes two to three times more nutritious back then than now and that's because if you think about it farmers have mined the soils and when the when the white man came to America the soils were actually fairly rich and fertile they had a lot of topsoil but with uh, you know farming and pulling the nutrients out of the soil and not being so concerned with putting nutrients back in the soil 
you know, then the topsoils degrade and then people think you get away with, oh, just put some fertilizer in there. That'll put everything back in that we've taken out. And when they're pulling out tonnages of produce, right, every year off a field and they put five bags or six bags of fertilizer back in the field, that, that's a really imbalanced equation, right? They're, they're pulling a lot of food out. They're not putting as much food, you know, nutrients back in, you know, then there's going to be some deficient food being made. And this is something not often talked about that I'm super passionate about. And that's why I'm so much into growing my own food. And I want you guys to do that also, because if you just rely on the standard agriculture system, you know, you're going to be eating imbalanced food. Now, I don't want to put you off from eating fruits and vegetables because, you know, fruits and vegetables, once again, are by far the best food in the agriculture system. In my opinion, you could be buying but even better yet, you know, if you want to have the highest level of health, in my opinion, you need to be growing your own food and growing nutrient dense food. So be sure to check out growingyourgreens.com, which is where I teach you guys how to do just that. All right, so the next box of produce we got coming right out right here. And uh, this is a mixed box, actually, it's a top box. So we stopped at, uh, you know, farmer's markets, also uh, one of my favorite fruit stands or farms. And we got, uh, wow, these chermoyas. These are from the farmer's market, the Hollywood farmer's market, uh, 350 a pound. These are quite ready to eat now. Only able to get a few of them because we got there late. Then we got some of my favorite uh, Forte avocados. Plus we got this other variety of avocado that I've never heard before and I don't remember the name. And uh, those, uh, the Fortes are organic. These guys are non-organic and these guys are 50 cents each. Avocados are one of the things that's actually least sprayed. And then we got these guys, which are grown with uh, IPM. These are conventional, but grown with IPM. So IPM is called integrative pest management. That's like kind of a step above conventional produce because IPM, they try to use the least toxic pesticides and also use beneficial insects whenever possible to control outbreaks. And uh, these are some super delicious mandarins. Uh, let's see, the Fortes were a dollar each. These Avos were 50 cents each. These chermoyas were 350 a pound, and these mandarins were 99 cents a pound. So the next fruit I got, of course, are these guys right here. These guys are known as Campari tomatoes. They're my favorite tomato, you know, off season since we're getting out of the tomato season nowadays. And uh, these guys are actually hot house grown, so these are actually classified as conventional produce because they're not certified organic. But in my opinion, you know, greenhouse grown produce is for the most part in many cases all right in my book because if it's in a greenhouse guess what they don't have to spray for pests unless they get a pest outbreak uh, but most of the time they're able to exclude pests by simply closing the door on the greenhouse and keeping them out in addition inside greenhouse culture they often also use ipm or integrative pest management so they use beneficial insects before they have to spray and if they do spray they will spray in isolated areas, you know, they don't have to like cover the whole field because once again, they're controlling the environment and bugs and pests and whatnot are not going to get in. That being said, they, these are grown under hydroponics and you know, that's a whole nother topic that I'm not going to get into, you know, but you know, I want to encourage you guys always to do the best you can, right? These tomatoes, I'd rather have Campari tomatoes that are ripened on the vine and if treated properly post harvest will ripen even more off the vine um, if they're treated properly and they're gonna actually taste like tomatoes and I'm buying these instead of organic tomatoes that number one cost more and number two are probably pink and picked too early coming out of Mexico these ones also are grown in the USA which I tend to think produce from the USA is a bit higher quality than that of Mexico. These tomatoes were an awesome deal, 25 pounds for $15. And the majority of these Campari's will be getting dehydrated, so I'll have my own, you know, raw dehydrated uh, tomatoes or sun-dried tomatoes made in the dehydrator uh, without any salt added. And one of the things I like to do is actually use tomatoes or dried tomatoes in sauces and recipes and soup recipes to thicken things up when things are a little bit too watery without having to add any kind of nuts or seeds. So yeah, these uh, tomatoes, uh, fresh, will turn into some awesome sun-dried tomatoes, probably even maybe by tomorrow. All right, so let's see what kind of produce we got next. Oh, I think we got all organic produce coming up next. Next box we got right here. Ugh, 
coming right out. Ugh. Take a look at these guys. Look at this. Whoa. <laughs> organic lemons. It starts with a nine. It's organic. Um, yeah, one whole box of lemons. Probably about 35 pounds of organic lemons. I don't know if you guys price organic lemons lately in the store, but sometimes they're running like $2.99 a pound. It's just ridiculous, man. So at the wholesale produce terminal, uh, this whole box of lemons was only 14 bucks. Uh, we'll have enough to make uh, lemon juice. One of my favorite things we'll, to do, we'll be able to juice some of the lemons, mix it in with some of that sugar cane juice that I'll be making for some awesome, basically, uh, like lemonade, natural lemonade. Nothing could be better. So, I mean, these are some of the items from the wholesale produce terminal, you know, the standard uh, terminal that I go to. Be sure to check my past episodes where I have videos on how specifically I shop at the Wholesale Produce Terminal to maximize my dollars. And unfortunately, this week at the Wholesale Produce Terminal, they didn't have a lot of organic stuff. So that was kind of sad, you know. That's why I got a lot of the stuff from the Wholesale Produce Terminal was conventional this week. And I was just doing the best I can. This was the only organic item I found. So the next set of produce items I want to get into are the organic items. And I'll also share with you guys my source on how to get organic uh, produce wholesale in the Southern California area. All right, so these last produce items were from actually a company called Heath and Lejeune. And Heath and Lejeune is a wholesale produce distributor of organic produce, like 99% organic. And they will sell direct to you guys. And you know, although they sell to many different stores across the United States, including Whole Foods and other places. So if you're buying produce at Whole Foods, it might have gone through the doors at Heath and Lejeune. But why let Whole Foods buy it and then resell to you and mark it up like 50%, you know? So they're doubling their money on the produce, you know, when you can buy it direct from Heath and Lejeune by the case, right? They will not break up case. You can't go there and buy one half. Well, you gotta buy minimum one case, but even if you just wanna buy one case of produce, they'll sell it to you and you're gonna save like 50%. So let me go ahead and show you guys what I got this time from Heath and Lejeune. First thing right here, Got a whole box of these guys. You're like, John, is that more lemons? Well, these actually aren't lemons. These are actually called sweet limes. And these sweet limes are my favorite. They're not like limes, because they don't take like a lime. And you've noticed, and wait, John, those are limes, but they're yellow, they're not green. Well, limes, when they're ripe, they should be yellow and not green. They're picked when they're green, because people like that flavor profile of what they believe a lime should taste like. But these are not even related to the standard limes. These are known as the sweet limes. And uh, these are quite good, actually. If uh, optimally ripe, kind of like this one is, nice and yellow, they actually have no acid to them. And they have a mildly sweet flavor, but they're not high in sugar either. So it's almost like juicing these guys is just a nice, refreshing citrus beverage. And it's hard to describe the flavor because it's just so mellow. It's like drinking water with some like uh, like a really small amount of Meyer lemon but it's not even it's not acid at all I can't even explain it you guys just have to try these sweet limes if you've never tried them uh, this box here was uh, 37 pounds for 37 bucks so it's about a dollar pound from my favorite citrus of this time of year the sweet limes all right coming up next oh we got these guys right here check it out organic cantaloupes this box here was 28.75 for 12 pieces, you know, organic cantaloupes right now at this point in time are actually hard to come by and can run, you know, $1.49 or more per pound at your local store. So I'm just glad to get some organic stuff, uh, organic melons, you know, because we are getting into the fall and winter, usually not a really good melon time. But, and these guys have a nice, strong scent to them and I'm sure they're gonna be quite delicious to eat. All right, next we got <laughs> more organic melons. So what we got here are some organic honeydew melons, five pieces for $18. And uh, in general, the honeydews will store longer than the cantaloupes. That being said, um, if they're not ripe, these honeydews actually happen to be ripe. You could tell by the coloring. They're not just like a pale kind of greenish. They're like nice and colored up, nice and yellow. I think one of these is so ripe that I might be eating that as my next meal after I make this video. So yeah, organic honeydews. And you know, you know, I could be eating these guys conventional 
and it could have got these at the wholesale produce terminal just as conventional. But you know, I always try to support organic agriculture whenever I can, you know, not only for my health, because I do believe personally that organic, you know, grown produce has higher nutrition, but also for the planet, you know, it's less detrimental to the planet health, the planet's health. You know, there's a lot of runoff from conventional fertilizers that are creating dead zones and, you know, contaminating groundwater and all this kind of stuff. Plus also, you know, the organic produce has less toxins in it, you know, than the conventional stuff, in my opinion. I mean, there are some really nasty pesticides that are being sprayed on conventional produce. And if you have an option and have the money and are able to afford the organic, I do encourage you guys and recommend that you guys purchase organic whenever you can as well. All right, next produce item we got, we got these pineapples here. And check this out, man. This is a pretty rare find for me. We got these guys, dull organic pineapples. 10 pieces for $16.75. That's a super amazing deal. Now these guys are a little bit smaller, but you know what? These guys are gonna end up uh, make some delicious, probably orange pineapple juice, one of my favorite things. And uh, as you guys are learning, you know, I'm not just getting like all oranges or all bananas to eat. I've gotten a whole range of different produce items, you know. One of the things that I strive to do in my life is have abundance. Have abundance in my garden, have so many things growing, I have more food than I know what to do with, so that I could, you know, eat as much as I'd like, and have a lot of variety in my house of fresh fruits, so that, you know, any particular day I wake up, I might feel like eating pineapples today. What if I feel like eating, you know, um, honeydews, I could do that, or if I feel like eating persimmons, or I still have pomegranates and apples in my fridge, you know, I have a over 10, 12 different kind of fruits that I could eat at any day, you know, and some people might be having just bananas and oranges or something like that, you know, and that would get boring to me, you know, I always like mixing it up and kind of checking in with my body and what it feels like and what it really wants to be eating at that time. Sometimes it doesn't really feel like anything, and then of course I'm going for the ripest, sweetest fruit that I got, and with this much selection, it's easy to have, you know, some ripe, sweet fruit on hand always. So now we're down to the last produce item I got this week, and let me go ahead and share that with you guys. Right here, we've got all these little baby watermelons. These are organic mini watermelons, and yes, these are seedless, because that is all that is available. I always encourage you guys to get the seeded watermelons whenever you can. Uh, this was basically 11 count of little mini seedless watermelons for uh, $22.75, I believe. So that's a pretty decent price, $2 each, I think, in the store. They're at least double that, and it is actually hard to find organic watermelon at this point in time. So I'm glad to have them. And also, these watermelons are nice and firm. These guys will easily last, you know, probably like, uh, I'm thinking about a month in the fridge. So, you know, you guys may be seeing like, John, that's a lot of produce, man. Like, how are you gonna eat all that stuff? So a lot of it will save, you know, fairly well. And I go through produce rather quickly. I have several refrigerators that some of the produce gets stored in. And if you're, you know, wanting to learn on how to store the produce specifically, be sure to check my past episodes. I'll put a link down below. It's called Produce Management One-on-One -on -one and how I deal with having all this produce and uh, making sure it doesn't go bad, doesn't spoil before I get to use it. Of course, I do also like to freeze and dry some of the produce I have before it goes bad. But if it goes bad, it's not the end of the world because guess what? It ends up in my compost pile that ends up feeding my garden, that ends up feeding me. I mean, that's pretty much the end of this episode today. And if you guys notice like, John, are you a fruititarian? Because you only got like pretty much fruit. You didn't get any vegetables. Well, no, I'm not a fruititarian. Well, the fruit is the main source of my calories. I encourage you guys out there to, you know, eat a plenty of fruit and it should be a good portion of your calorie intake if, you know, you don't want to do it all because there's a lot of nutrients in the fresh fruits. Um, I also eat plenty of vegetables. Vegetables are one of my mainstays and I want to encourage you guys if you are eating a fruit-based diet to don't neglect the vegetables. They are super important. They're, you know, more mineral dense and they have their own whole set of phytochemicals and phytonutrients that are in there as well. My goal every day is to eat two pounds of leafy greens as well as other assorted vegetables. I still have plenty of vegetables growing in my garden, lots of different leafy greens. 
this time of year. And uh, you know, so yeah, so I eat fruits and vegetables is mainly what I eat. And I want to encourage you guys to do that as well. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not already. And be sure to check my past episodes for other episodes of our 300 episodes on eating a plant-based raw foods diet, whether you want to eat all raw or mostly all raw, I don't really care. My main message to you is, you know, I'm sharing with you guys how you guys could do this diet affordably, places you could go to get the produce, you know, how you could save money, and basically share with you guys my tips and techniques that I've learned over the last 19 years now doing this diet. You know, there's not too many people on YouTube that has been doing this diet as long as I have and, uh, you know, successfully over all these years. And, you know, that's why I make these videos because, you know, I was given a second chance at life and my second chance, you know, I'm here in the, here on earth to do more than just make a million dollars and be successful as many people would call it. But to really help my fellow man, help people out there, help you guys watch me today, you know, to uh, be able to live a healthier lifestyle because that's why I believe I'm on earth. Before I go, I want to give you guys this resource here. If you guys live in Los Angeles or Southern California, you guys want to uh, visit Heath and Lejeune, and they are where I got the organic produce. You could actually just call in your order and tell them what you want and then uh, pick it up and uh, pay cash or even a credit card. They started taking credit cards just recently and uh, just pick up. Even if you're just ordering one case, I've gone in there and ordered like two cases of stuff. And uh, you could give them a call at 213 Six one four one nine zero nine, and that's uh, for a will call cash customer. You have to pick it up. They will not deliver it to you one case. They are in Commerce, California, at one four one seven South Eastman Avenue. And I know you guys that are living in San Diego right now, John, is there a place in San Diego I could go? Well, check your local phone book. In general, you know, I would recommend if you live in San Diego, it's not too far of a drive to go to Commerce once a month to pick up some produce store it because you will end up saving some money and make a weekend trip out of it to go there i mean in in, in la and have some fun visit some farmers markets at the same time and yeah just have fun in life eat some fruit and be happy <laughs> so once again this is john kohler with okraw.com we'll see you next time and until then remember keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables they're always the best all right, this is John Kohler with OKRod.com. Okay Today we have another exciting episode for you. We're coming at you from the 2014 Woodstock Fruit Festival. We're all having a blast here. This is a two week event this year and they're gonna do it again another two weeks in 2015. And uh, definitely